November 11th, Veterans Day. Veterans Day was created as a celebration to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, their love of country, and their willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. My name is Glenn Podlesnik, and I'm the study hall teacher for Whitefish Bay High School. I'm also a veteran of the Gulf War. I was joined the Marine Corps when I was young, and I was asked to give a few experiences of my time in the war. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this is my story. Every veteran has their own. My hopes in sharing this information is just that you take a few minutes today on Veterans Day or any day, and when you see a veteran, whether it's in the grocery store or walking down the street or in the park wearing a veteran's hat, take a minute to say thank you because it's that simple gesture of you saying thank you that helps validate to us that our sacrifices were all worth it. My story begins back in 1987. I had just graduated from Milwaukee Hamilton. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go to school. I was thinking to become a teacher, um, but I didn't have the money. So myself, along with three of my buddies from high school, joined the United States Marine Corps Reserves. We thought we could use the GI Bill to help pay our way through college. Little did we know that about two years later, uh, in around November of 1989, all of that would change. So if you fast forward ahead a couple of years, I was just turned 20. I had started going to school at MATC to become that teacher and I was assigned to a reserve unit right here out of Milwaukee, Fox Company 224. I was part of the assault section. I had a, actually a rocket launcher, it's called a SMA, shoulder mounted assault weapon. Um, right around late of 1990 or late of 1989, um, Saddam Hussein in Iraq decided that because of oil prices and some other neighboring disputes, he was going to evade and occupy a small little country called Kuwait that was just to the south of Iraq. It was then that President Bush and other leaders all around the world decided they were going to form a coalition and go in and try to liberate Kuwait. That operation started out as something called Operation Desert Shield to protect, uh, to protect Kuwait. It would later turn into um, Operation Desert Storm where we would evade Kuwait and force out the Iraqi army, liberating Kuwait. Once our unit was activated, we got shipped over to Cherry Point, North Carolina, where we did about two months worth of training prior to heading over to Saudi Arabia to begin with uh, our service in Operation Desert Shield. As I stepped off the airplane, it was New Year's morning, um, 1990. What a way to start the new year. Uh, I can remember my first step off the plane looking around. I was 20 years old. I just graduated high school a few years earlier and hadn't even really started my life. And I remember thinking to myself, there are people here that want to kill me. Uh, and it really sank in. And I, as I say it right now, I can feel it in my heart. I, I can feel it in my, my soul. Just the feeling of fear and just anxiety of not knowing what was about to happen. But that's one of my biggest memories I take from that whole experience. Um, as I stepped off that plane and we headed across the desert, uh, we didn't know what was gonna come. Back in the day, we didn't have cell phones like they do today. So we did have some portable cameras we were able to take. And luckily I have a few pictures that were able to capture a few of the moments, a couple of the sites that I'll never forget. Um, a couple of them are this picture of me with my bed right on my shoulders. That's a cot. Um, I had a gas mask. I had a, a suit that I had to put on whenever air raid sirens would go because we were worried about biological weapons that Saddam was supposed to use against us. Uh, the second picture is of my bunker. Uh, this is where I lived most of my day. Um, as you can see out in the sunset there, uh, you have the smoke from some of the oil fields which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, but this was it. This was my life. I, I went from being a 20 year old sitting at a desk in school, going to college, to sitting in a hole in the desert, uh, worried that someone might come running up trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. 
This group of guys was the assault section for Fox Company. Uh, if you look at the back row, second from the right, that's me. Um, there were 10 of us. Five of us had rocket launchers. The other five were assigned a rifle and they would essentially stand guard next to us. As we focused in on our targets, uh, kind of created tunnel vision. So you couldn't see around you. So it was always your partner's job to kind of protect you to make sure nothing happened to you. Uh, I remember this group, the day that Operation Desert Shield switched to Operation Desert Storm uh, is when the war was actually going to begin. We got called into our lieutenant's tent and in there he told us at 2 a.m. President Bush was gonna go on the air and tell the American people that the war was about to begin. He then said, okay, now go get some rest and be in your hole by two o'clock. Can you imagine, I'm 20 years old, uh, I'm in a country halfway across the world, I'm told to go relax that the war is about to start in two hours. Well, two hours later comes and I'm in my hole and the air raid sirens hit um, when that happened, we'd have to throw on a gas mask and a chemical suit because once again, we were worried about Saddam Hussein using chemical warfare against us. I remember looking out into the dark desert. Uh, the moon wasn't out, so it was everything was really dark. And I remember growing up watching war movies with my dad, and it would be all these World War II movies where there was hand-to-hand -hand combat in the trenches. And I was in the hole by myself. My... My gunner uh, who was protecting me was on, in another hole right next to me. And I can remember thinking to myself that the enemy is going to come running up and jumping into this hole with me and do hand-to-hand -hand combat. As it turned out, that wasn't the case. Uh, the war started with a lot of bombs, scud missiles, uh, aerial attacks. So we had to worry about that those first few days. Um, but that's just the feeling that I had. It was in my vision. So what my mind encompassed was actually scarier than what was about to happen. Uh, just imagine though, being 20 years old, in a hole, in the desert, you have a rocket launcher and you're being told the war's about to start. It, it, just the, the, the feeling of that is almost undescribable. This is a picture of my partner, uh, Sergeant Updike. Uh, this was taken in an airport just inside of Kuwait. As Operation Desert Storm began and we started to push Iraq out of Kuwait, uh, Saddam Hussein ordered his troops to start oil wells on fire. They were able to start over 700 fires. And what would happen is, as the winds blew, there wouldn't be a cloud in the sky. But if that oil came right towards us, all the smoke from the oil fields, you could put your hand right up in front of your face and you wouldn't be able to see it. So we were forced to do our patrols holding on to one another just so people wouldn't get separated. Um, later, we would end up having to burn all of our uniforms because they were just coated in oil. The so prior to the war, there was all this talk that the Iraqi Republican Guard was the best, uh, most well-trained uh, army in the world. Uh, they had a reputation of never losing. We were worried about the biological weapons that could be used against us. But in the long run, uh, none of that came true. Uh, it only took us about, once the ground war started, 100 hours to uh, liberate Kuwait and get Iraq to return to its own country. And we were sent home. I remember getting home and getting off the plane in America, and we were greeted by thousands of people. Um, in the weeks to come, we'd be given ticker tape, ticker tape parades like you hadn't seen since World War II. Uh, our, our unit actually went down to Chicago and marched in the streets and they literally had ticket tape falling on us. Uh, it actually made us feel guilty. I know they were there to support us and that was their intent. But for service members who watched or had heard about how our service members that came back from Vietnam were treated, and then during these parades, you would see Vietnam veterans in their uniform standing and saluting us and just knowing what they had to go through when they came home and what they actually faced during their war. It was 10 times worse than what we had to face. There's not a Gulf War veteran that would say different. Um, that feeling of guilt still kind of sticks with us. And just remember that, that those Vietnam veterans, they didn't get their parades. So if you see 
some old man in a wheelchair or some guy walking in the grocery store and he's got a Vietnam veteran hat on. Take a couple extra seconds and just say thank you because he definitely deserves it. These were just a few stories. They, they weren't blood and gore. Um, they weren't big war stories. They're just about some simple things that happen. From stepping off an airplane, knowing people want to kill you, to being told you're about to start a war, um, to coming home and just feeling guilty about what you just did and what you're witnessing. Um, there's a lot that went on in between this. Uh, that's not the point. The, the point I'm trying to make is just take a second and place yourself in the position of all these veterans who have served. Um, they do it voluntarily. They, they do it so that somebody else doesn't have to. Uh, all I, all I want to do is hope that I can give you a glimpse into some experiences that we've gone through that, so that you know that's what, that's what makes us. Those are the emotions we feel from the simplest things. Imagine the emotions that you get from the blood and gore. So all I'm asking is that you do take your time on Veterans Day and anytime you see a veteran. And it's a simple gesture. You know, just, just say thank you. It does make a difference. Uh, it, it, it makes us feel like uh, the time that we served means something uh, to those back home. As you walk the halls of Whitefish Bay High School, take a few extra moments and make your way down towards the Memorial Gym on the first floor. Right outside the gym doors in the hallway, you're going to find plaques that honor Whitefish Bay service members, such as Lieutenant Abrams, and specialist for Arnold. There's a plaque here that represents all of the Whitefish Bay citizens that died during World War II. Take a moment and think about that. All of those names probably walked these same halls. Thank you for your time. And remember, thank of that.